you all. Carpet Bagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in Elkhart, Indiana. And uh, today is the day that I'm finally planning on uh, arriving back in uh, Rochester, New York. I'm going back to Jen's after a uh, multi-month road trip out to the west coast and back. But uh, leaving Indiana here, I stayed uh, at my mom's for two nights, but uh, we're heading eastward towards, uh, towards New York. But before we left Indiana, I did want to stop and check out the RV and mobile home Hall of Fame here in Elkhart, Indiana. Elkhart's actually where they manufacture a lot of RVs and mobile homes. I know I get I get the suggestion a lot from people uh, saying, why don't you buy an RV? Why don't you buy a mobile home? You, know, you could travel the country. You'd have everything you need right there. And there's a, there's 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 a, several reasons that I've not pulled the trigger on that. One is cost. RVs do gobble gas. And they do require a lot of maintenance. Uh, RVs uh, are difficult to park. You know, you're difficult. You pull into a museum, pull into a roadside attraction, go into a city to try to see something. It's hard to find a place to park an RV. Now, given given all that, I do love the idea of an RV. Like the idea is like personally appealing to me. And I think for people that um, that have a slower pace than me, that an RV could be very beneficial. I mean, if you're moving slowly from city to city, you're traveling, maybe stay a few weeks in one place, I could see how an RV would be very, uh, very beneficial. And there's there's other solutions to having a secondary form of travel. You could, you know, pull a car on your RV. But for my travels, I'm finding it very difficult. Maybe someday if I change, kind of make alterations to my pace, to my form of travel, I may uh, may consider getting an RV. And I remember visiting this uh, this museum for the first time years and years ago. Over 10 years ago, I first came here to this museum. Uh, my grandfather and uh, my grandmother uh, came with us. And just, I guess we, we did it just, just for the fun of it. We took their RV from their, ho their, their home in uh, probably about an hour and a half from here. And we rode in an RV to the RV museum just uh, to get the full RV experience and i love oh man I, I i'm nostalgic about my grandparents old rv it is it is a lot of fun i think to have a home on wheels so let's check out the rv hall of fame and museum and who knows by the end of it i might change my mind please follow me out here in front of the museum this is elkhart indiana so we do have an elk and this is not only a patriotic elk with the American flag on his face, this is also an RV themed elk. You can see he's got wheels right there and an RV on his uh, side there. All right, as we enter the museum there, I can see the little scale replica of a fancy RV there. That's quite a luxurious model. We start here on Airstream Drive where it talks about the American journey. You see the uh, family there. Um, I don't know what they're doing in that picture. They're um, maybe digging for rocks. You see this old school RV there. It's actually pulled by a Model T. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's pretty, uh, pretty old. It's a 1916 telescoping apartment you see the front is an automobile but in the back the it opens up and basically is just a little bed for you to uh, sleep in and then they've got some other some cabinets and stuff to keep supplies in and yeah I really do love the uh, the old airstream design of RVs I, you know like I said I've, I've I can't make in my head I can't make an RV make sense for my purposes, but I really do love RVs. I love the design behind them. Love the concept and spirit behind them as well. Oh, look at that. That is a uh, Airstream shaped guitar. Apparently it's called the Airscream. It's pretty amazing. These are kind of the pop-up style 
uh, camper trailers. See it kind of all squishes down. You can pull it by your car, but then it pops up into beds. It has a little area to prepare food as well. This is a 1928 house car. Love that name, house car. And uh, yeah, you can peer in the windows there. Oh, that's delightful. Oh, you can see a couple there making hot dogs over the fire. Maybe that's what I need. Maybe an RV is too big, but I need a, a house car. And this is a little random for the RV museum, but here we have a uh, photo op with Poker Alice, who was a famed poker player in uh, Deadwood, South Dakota. And uh, here you can get your uh, photo made with her. She's looking at a, a uh, hand of poker. Now she was famous for smoking cigars. Looks like someone has, uh, has stolen Poker Alice's cigar right out of her mouth. Three aces there. Fun fact, I've never played a game of poker and I don't know how. <laughs> she knows how though, she's a, she's a poker ace. It's, oh, it's, she's got three aces and two eights. I know that has a some significance, aces and eights. And I only know that because there was a professional wrestling stable called uh, the Aces and Eights that were a gang of evil bikers. Uh, what's it, they call it the dead man's hand. I wish I knew. I, that was a whole thing, whole thing about aces and eights. If you know the story behind aces and eights, the, the, the card hand, leave a comment in the comment section. Yeah, you can peek right around there. You can see she's got the, uh, the aces and eights. Over here, you can see a couple of children playing with a butterfly. I feel like all these cutouts were at one time in one display uh, portraying a family going camping, but now they're kind of spread out through the museum. Oh, all these wonderful airstreams here. Look at that one. Beautiful shape. This is the Bolus Road Chief here. So we can uh, come over here and peek, peek in the RV. Oh, you can see how it, uh, it's wooden, wooden paneling on the inside. Up there you can see Mount Rushmore, which is, you know, probably something that a lot of people see while uh, traveling in RV. It's kind of a classic uh, piece of family vacationing here in the United States. Ride to Mount Rushmore in one of... Uh, one of these recreational vehicles. See there, this one has a cockpit to it. You can actually drive it by itself and not pull it with a car. Now most of these RVs have ropes blocking the doorway or signs that say do not enter. But this one here, this 1954 Shasta travel trailer, it says enter so we can actually uh, peek inside of this you can see not very large has the little dining area or you can play cards there a little stove and then just right next to the kitchen is a little sleeping area but you know when you're traveling you're doing things all day sometimes that's all all you really need we are also allowed to enter this 1954 yellowstone travel trailer here Ooh, you can feel the whole thing moving as we step in. Oh, looks like they got, uh, what is that, some, uh, some uh, cinnamon rolls there on the stove. Got the fridge there and the cozy bed tucked over here in the corner. Some smaller travel trailers over here. You have this uh, 1957 teardrop trailer and all this really is is a, a bed that you uh, drag behind your car. You can see it's, yeah, it's a 100% bed. 
Maybe that's what, maybe that's what I need, a little bed that I can just drag around with me. Then this is a 1957 uh, Cerro Scotty travel trailer, and it's very small. You couldn't even really stand up straight on the inside here, but it still has a little kitchen that you can crouch in front of. And I guess you just sleep on that back couch there. It's another one we can check out on the inside, a 1954 Holiday Rambler travel trailer. Little fridge right there. And uh, got a little parrot there on the stove. And there you got the, the couch slash bed right there. And uh, some little bunks on, uh, on top. Say pop-up, 1956. Campos prototype tent trailer. If you look inside, you can see they have a beds on both sides, a little privacy curtain there in the middle. It's a Coachman Cadet travel trailer. Here. Oh, you can step inside the top bunk there, and then the dining, the dining area there, under under the bed. Take a peek inside here. Got some uh, lemonade sitting out for uh, for the family to drink. And uh, oh look, you can see a RV shower right here. Actually, it's a combo shower toilet. So you can, I, I guess you can actually use the toilet while you shower. Well, that seems very, very, uh, very convenient actually. This is a 1967 FAN luxury liner. Let's see what sort of luxuries they had in 1967. Have a fairly large living area in here. It's actually a pretty massive RV, probably really massive for the time. Here past the uh, bedroom. Oh, and look at this. This is luxurious. You actually have a... Uh, actual bathtub and shower shower and bathtub combo and the toilet the toilet isn't even in the shower check in the back here this is called the uh the last resort peek in the back bathroom there i don't know if the shower i don't know where the shower is hiding if it's in here with the toilet or not, but uh, oh, I like how everything up here, I like how everything is covered in carpet. Pretty sweet. Over here we have the 1985 Bounder motorhome. It says here that this is the motorhome that changed the motorhome industry. So let's see uh, inside here. Oh my, yeah, this is luxurious I also like the lamp on the dashboard that's pretty amazing but uh, yeah tons of cushy sitting areas here on well, this back bedroom here it's awfully dark in here but yeah complete like bedroom separate from everything else it's a van called feeling groovy see the flower decals on the outside and actually has a family's uh, family's uh, personal account of traveling in this uh, van. It says that uh, they'd often sleep four people in the van, and on one occasion they fit 13 people in here on a trip to Disney World. I don't know, let's see if we could fit 13 people in here. All right, you got one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's not that big. <laughs> that seems like fitting 13 people in here would be pretty, uh, pretty intense. And look who we have here. It is the Gemini Giant, the iconic uh, muffler man from Route 66, one of the most iconic individual muffler men. It looks like we can uh, stick our face in his helmet. Who's this dog here? I 
guess this RV was actually featured on a YouTube channel. I do kind of like them incorporating people's like personal experiences with uh, with the individual RVs. Uh, so this family, I guess their YouTube channel is Keep Your Daydream, traveled uh, Route 66 in uh, this RV here. Look at that's the mayor. <laughs> it's the mayor of Uranus right there. So yeah, this thing is massive. The Daydream here. Let's uh, take a look inside. Again, I've not heard of this YouTube channel. It's uh, Keep Your Daydream. I may have to take a peek at their channel. Yeah, it's nice, uh, nice big uh, bathroom there. It's kind of a bathtub if you're willing to like take a take a um, a bath sitting cross-legged. But uh, looks like they got all oh, the upholstery is all Route 66 themed there. And then look, oh look at this what we have on uh, on the dashboard here. We have the bobblehead of the Gemini Giant. I actually have one of these in uh, in the bunker. I look at a bobble. It's a 1974 GMC motorhome. I love this big yellow beast here. This RV is too big. This RV is too small. This RV is just right. Getting to some more modern RVs. This one looks pretty ritzy. Very uh, swanky RV. Here. Oh yeah, look at that bathroom. That's the uh, that's the fanciest bathroom I've seen in any RV. The fancy uh, sink there. They have the mini bathtub and an aloe plant in the shower. This here is one of the most rare RVs in the world. There's only two made. This is the Star Streak Two. So I guess the Star Streak One. It's somewhere else. Looks like we can't go inside, but we can peek in to the Star Streak. This is the Executive. This is a 1986 RV. And yeah, this is another super swanky one. You see the TV there in the dashboard so the driver can uh, watch TV while he pilots this massive RV down the freeway. Yeah, you know, all the modern luxuries there. The microwave. Got some of their dishes out here still. And then always cool when they have their their own personal bedroom in the back of the RV. See this modern RV in here, the Furion. You can actually take a look inside this futuristic RV here. I've seen all the classic vintage models and oh my gosh it's like a spaceship in here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah look just look at this the design here this is this is wild. Oh the big flat screen TV the couch there the uh the uh the up the stairs there's a upstairs apparently the yeah. fancy super fancy bathroom there and then the private bedroom in here i think that wow i don't think they can get much swankier than this and here is a diagram of the rv factory itself here in elkhart you can see how they put together the rvs there because they're putting the wiring in the top there glued and then finishing them off Results over here strong and here we have Centennial Charlie he is the official mascot of the 2010 RV industry Centennial and one of the ambassadors of affordability so here we see Centennial Charlie driving in his little Model T pulling this tiny little pink RV behind him can we can we get in here and see oh, okay 
It's kind of bare bones RV, but he, you know, he's a bear. He doesn't need things to be fancy. Yeah, I get so torn because I love RVs. I love the design. I love the concept. I love the mythology behind it. But man, they are, uh, they eat a lot of gas. They're expensive. So I've, I've always tried to calculate like, could getting an RV make sense for me? And every time I do it, the math just doesn't add up. It's just more, it's cheaper for me than the way I travel, especially because I travel kind of fast through the country. Um, it just doesn't add up for me. It's just cheaper for me to stay in hotels and to, you know, eat food in restaurants rather than preparing it. Um, it's cheaper than that than it would be for me to try to manage an RV. So maybe someday, maybe someday I'll change up my style and an RV will become more realistic. What do you guys think? Do you think I should get an RV? Leave a comment in the comment section. Going out to, her, to a very rural area. As I travel this long, lonesome road, as I travel this American highway, uh, there's only one place, there's only one place in America where four states meet at the same point. Those states are Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. They all meet at one point, known as the Four Corners Monument. And I, I wonder to myself, how many, how many places are there three states that meet? And I looked it up on the internet and apparently 62 spots! There's 62 spots where three states meet each other. That's so many. I, I, did, I was surprised. I didn't think that was possible. Now apparently a lot of them are uh, involve rivers and other like unmanageable terrain. So you can't stand at that point. There are however I think 38 points where you can stand. Where there are markers that where, where three states meet. And we're currently at one. We're at this marker is dedicated to the spot where Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio all meet at one point. But actually this monument here doesn't, doesn't mark the exact point. It says 130 feet south is the point where Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio meet. This marker was erected by the Hillsdale County Historical Society. I'm not sure why they didn't put the marker down there where the actual point is, but uh, they moved it over here. I wonder, yeah, I don't know. You think 130 feet is not that far to walk, but you think that uh, they would have, uh, they would have gone ahead and put it down there. Someone did leave a Carnotosaurus there on top of, uh, of the monument. All right, we can walk down here and try to find the exact monument. It's apparently in the middle of the street here. You can see. Okay. There. We can uncover it just a little bit. You see there is an M for Michigan in, uh, in the middle of the road and uh, we just we're coming in from indiana so that way is indiana okay so i think if i understand this correctly <laughs> bear with me here that's m for michigan however this is michigan along here all that is michigan that anything past this way is indiana but we turn around and that is Ohio. So that house, that farm, that's in Ohio. However, the field across the street from the farm, that's Michigan. This field here is in Ohio, but this field here is in Indiana. So you see, they put these, these white posts there to divide the field in half. That is the Ohio field. That is the Indiana field.
So everyone got that, so everyone got that straight. You can see they do look different. I don't know if they're growing different crops in the different states. Looks like, yeah, it looks like maybe they were, they were definitely growing corn over here in Indiana, because that's what they do. That's what they do in Indiana. I don't know what they were growing over here in Ohio. What is Ohio known uh, for growing? What, what, they, they're growing Buckeyes over here, maybe. And then uh, looks like over in Michigan, it's just a field of grass over here. All right, I didn't bring my twister board, so we go, we go uh, right foot, Indiana, left foot, Ohio, and then I'll touch one of my fingers to Michigan. Doing a dance on all three states. So after all these weeks, all these months, I am finally back in Ohio. I'm nervous, actually. The last time I was in Ohio was uh, months ago when I started this trip. When uh, I got to Cleveland, and the, uh, my car broke down. I got that fixed. I was stranded in Cleveland for an extra day. Got my car fixed rather relatively quickly. And then the very next day, I got rear-ended right as I was about to enter Columbus, Ohio. And I was stranded in Columbus. How long was it? Like a week, I think I was in Columbus until I could finally get a rental car. It took four days to get a rental car because they didn't have any rental cars available. And I got uh, a rental car. This, <laughs> been following along, this is not the same rental car. It's the third rental car, the third white Nissan uh, Rogue that I've had on this trip. But um, yeah, back in Ohio, we can fingers crossed that nothing, uh, nothing bad is going to happen. But I actually got some good news. Almost as soon as I entered the state of Ohio, I got a phone call from the uh, the Geico insurance adjuster. And they inform me that they have, they have a projected date for when my car is going to be repaired. And it, that date is April 7th, April 7th. So what is that, a, what is today? I don't even know the date, but anyways, April 7th is the day that my car will be ready in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, well, that wasn't a con. I, I, I take that back. It wasn't concrete. He said that is the projected date. We will uh, get in contact with you closer to that to verify that that's the date that your car is going to be ready. So, yeah, good, I've been waiting months to hear some news. I've not gotten a solid date on when my car will be ready. So finally, as soon as I slip back into the state of Ohio, I get a call letting me know that at least they have a date. So at least I have something to hold on to. And uh, yeah, so that'll be ready. We'll have to, like I said, I'm headed back to the Rochester, New York area. And then um, I guess uh, on the 7th, I will come back to Columbus if everything goes according to plan. <laughs> Which of course, on this trip, very little has been going according to plan. But uh, if everything goes according to plan, we'll come back to Columbus and reclaim my vehicle. So uh, at least we have a date. At least we have a date now. Look at here in this rest area, they have a little museum area celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Ohio Turnpike. I guess that was in back in uh, back in 2015. So man, we're almost coming up on the the 70th anniversary here in a couple of years. Now they don't have any they don't have any actual artifacts in this uh, museum section. They do have some information on the history of the turnpike. Here's some old uh, cartoons, some old comic strips about the Ohio turnpike. 
That's interesting. Off in the political wilds. You see, Wash is going that way, Bark to Next going that way. I'm sure if we had the context, it would be hilarious. Up there we see Ohio on a boat as some sort of admiral with, uh, I guess these are all, uh, okay, these are all like politicians, local politicians in Ohio. I guess they got, they got the turnpike made and uh, Ohio itself is captaining the ship. Yeah, some interesting facts here along the wall. Did you know in 2005, as part of the Ohio Turnpike's 50th anniversary, the commission hosted the International Bridge, Tunnel, and Turnpike Association annual meeting in Cleveland. A vending machine that sells Easy Passes. I'm actually excited to be back out east where my Easy Pass works in most states. Out in California, they actually wouldn't take the Easy Pass, so it was, uh, you know, a huge hassle. They have some uh, Ohio themed drink machines as well. There is a, a so the state tree, the Ohio Buckeye, on uh, this vending machine. The state bird, the Cardinal, on uh, this vending machine over here. And then this vending machine right here is themed after the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's an Ohio penny press here. You can see all those pennies loaded in there in those tubes. And let's see, you can get uh, different uh, pressed pennies made. You can get, this is Vermilion, Vermilion Beach. I've never been there. You can get one with a ladybug on it, which is the Ohio State Insect. There is the Ohio Seal and uh, Vermilion Valley, Ohio. So uh, yeah, let's get us a Ohio pressed penny there. These modern machines, you don't, again, you don't have to put the penny in them. The old ones, you have to, you just have to load a penny in two quarters. That's got the pennies already loaded up. So they just need you to give them a dollar. And am I, am I not understanding how this takes dollars? Okay. The, the dollar slot is underneath. There we go. So let's see how this, oh, we got a pick ours. Let's just go, let's go with, uh, let's go with the ladybug see the press turning there. Oh, just dropped a penny down right there. You see the penny? And I guess waiting for the, uh, the ladybug to come. Oh yeah, it's waiting for our our, uh, our mold to go by. Okay, there, there you see right there is the the penny, uh, the, the ladybug penny. And I guess it's getting ready to drop that penny down to get crushed into ladybug form. It's gonna let go of it. Gonna let go of it. There it goes. And it's getting smushed there. Oh, there, I think I see it poking out. There we go, and it slid down there. And we have our, uh, oh no, I dropped it. Let's get that. And uh, you can see the ladybug pressed penny there. I will uh, try really hard not to lose this. I'm really bad about losing all my pressed pennies. I put them in my wallet, try to get them in there nice and secure, but then they end up sliding out and vanishing. We have some claw machines here at the uh, Ohio rest stop. And uh, yeah, different varieties of claw machines. Usually the ones that grab candy are usually the, the easiest ones to play. And then uh, the crane there. And uh, oh, what do you want on this one? The wheel of prizes. You actually can win, it looks like jewelry, different boxes of, uh, of jewelry there on the back panel that shows uh, cameras and iPods that you could potentially grab. But uh, down there, just see some, just see the different bits of, uh, of jewelry. The stacker game here, Jen is actually really good at this game she can uh, actually get the stack up pretty high you like have to like line up the bars to like keep going up without missing them I, I'm not good at this I'm not good at any of these really but uh, yeah, you can win a a uh, black series uh, Jedi Ray 
there or this uh, this camera right here yeah I will uh, I'll show you how this works if Jen was here I'd have her do it because she's good at this but let me see I gotta okay so uh, okay what is it press start oh okay press start and it says error it stole my dollar give me that dollar back oh man bummer I remember these machines here when I was a kid I would my mom would take me grocery shopping I would uh, I would pester her to give me some change to put in these machines I remember she I, she, I, she was reluctant she she didn't like me to uh, spend money on things that were uh, were junk so she would try to tell me that yeah don't worry about it those those you know it's, it's a waste of money but I was still always uh, always fascinated by it let's try the mystery mix here so you just don't know what you're getting let's see what a quarter will get us here in the mystery mix well it's got a, it's got a beaver there on the flap but let's see what is it let's open open oh, open this up right here the little little robot right there you know, my mom may have been right. In some ways, I don't feel like this is worth a quarter. I don't know. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm uh, definitely going to hang on to it forever. And behind these brochures there, you can see they have a floral Ohio there hanging on the wall. It's floral uh, arrangement in the shape of Ohio. Also in Ohio, apparently you can get uh, lottery tickets from a machine. You know what? We've had, we've had some bad luck on this trip. We're now back in Ohio, which was the original source of the bad luck. Let's, uh, let's get us a lottery ticket and see if we win. It's giving us the number now in case we have a gambling problem to call. So uh, they have $2 tickets, but the smallest denomination that the, uh, the credit card machine will accept is $10. So I guess we'll get a $10 ticket. We'll get this one because it has Ohio in the name all right so i put ten dollars with my debit card into the machine and uh hit the button there and uh, it says dispensing the purchase does it spin out the bottom there oh there it is here's our ohio bonus cash let's see how this works okay so i'm trying to figure out how this works i guess you show the numbers up here, you scratch off these numbers, and then if any of these numbers match these numbers, then you win that amount. So uh, I'll be scratching it off with my smashed penny here, my uh, my Ohio ladybug penny. And let's see. Okay, my numbers are 6, 17, 31, 5, 44, 36. So I have to match it to one of these. I guess if you want to like savor the enjoyment, you could do these one at a time. And you just get the full experience, or you just do it all at once and match those. But it really doesn't make a difference whether or not you win. So let's just uh, let's just go to town on it. So I got no matches. Was, uh, but I guess they're okay. Still have a chance to win the bonus cash. If I reveal, if this reveals a $50 symbol, I win $50 automatically. Wait, really? Am I, am I understanding this correctly? Okay. Oh, so this $50 bonus grape? What? I don't understand this. It's just... Okay, so there's symbols here. It says $50 grape, $100 pot, and $250 cherry. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing... I don't know. I... 
I'm not sure what I'm, what I'm even looking at. Yeah, it says, if I reveal, it shows a symbol there. It says $50 symbol or $250 symbol. Now it says those numbers, but it doesn't have a symbol. It has a grape, a pot, and a cherry. So I just assume that I spent $10 on nothing. But, you know, that's, yeah. I'm not really a fan of this. I'm not really a fan of <laughs> scratch-offs or gambling, but uh, I don't know. I just thought I would try it for once. And I feel that dark, empty feeling inside. And here we leave Ohio without any major incidents as we head into the great state of Pennsylvania. After a quick pass through Pennsylvania, here we are in our final state of New York. Oh no, some very tiny Santa has lost his hat. Stopped off in Angola, New York. Always thought this rest area was interesting because it actually sits in the median and you have to cross this footbridge here to get to it. Oh yeah, you can see the semis flying underneath the walkway there. And you cross over the highway here. You can peek out the window, watch the trucks go by. You can see there's a ghost of a McDonald's in here. So it used to be a McDonald's. Yeah, there's ghosts of all these old restaurants in here. It says Sandella. Sandella, I'm not sure what this restaurant was here. It does say, make out, it says pizza and pasta along the top there. There's another closed down restaurant in this food court. This is a uh, old ice cream stand. Looks like, yeah, it looks like the subway is still active, but all these other restaurants in the food court have been uh, shut down. You can see back there, it says Southwest Grill. Yeah, it's got dead mall vibes in here. But this old abandoned food court. It's at least four abandoned restaurant counters here that aren't currently being used. The subway back there is the only one still in use. I think this is the, this must be the old McDonald's dining room over here. There's the information desk. Of course, it's not open this time of night, but I'm gonna be in this area for a little while while I'm uh, recuperating so we can look at some of the things there is to do. Oh, we have the Lucy Museum. What else? The Herschel Carousel Museum. And if you guys have any other suggestions of stuff to do uh, in this part of New York, I would uh, happily take suggestions if you wanna leave those in uh, the comment section. Oh, what's this aquarium? Aquarium of Niagara? I've not been there. And all the vending machines have just been replaced by a single garbage can. And I have arrived back in Rochester, New York. Jen, did you miss me while I was gone? I missed you so much. <laughs> it's been, so exciting. When did you leave California? I seriously don't remember. Around our anniversary. <laughs> remember, it was like a couple days before our anniversary. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we were sad because we didn't plan right. And 
we wanted to be, we wanted to be together on Valentine's Day, but then because of that, we got our anniversary fell outside of the the time frame. So yeah, I've been on the road for since January eighth. A while. January eighth is when I left it. What day is it today? I don't. I think March twenty seventh. Around that. Probably. <laughs> it's been like three months. Been on the road. Is that three months? I mean, it's pretty close. Yeah, so it's been it's been crazy, and I think I think I'm gonna do some hibernation. I think I'm gonna sleep. You you look very tired. I am very tired. <laughs> you, I was in what you was look it? Out of it? Seven days ago, I was in California. I think seven or eight days ago, I was in California. And now you're here. And now I'm here. Now I'm back. <laughs> back. I'm much Rochester. more awake. Like, I just didn't drive across. It's country, like so. <laughs> it's like three in the morning right now. Is I'm not I'm actually as awake the... as I seem, but I'm definitely more awake than him. <laughs> you waited up for me. That was I nice. I did, yeah. Like three in the morning. I've got to edit this video. And then if you don't see me for a day or two or three, I'm probably You can send me hate messages. Hibernating. Yes, bother Jen over <laughs> her channel. Fault. Yeah. Go to her channel, uh, Jenny Penny, and, <laughs> and yell at her. And just leave comments on the videos. Like, Where's the carpet bagger? Where's the carpet bagger? Where's the carpet bagger? He's I'm sleeping. Really sleeping right now. And I think you're sleeping currently. Just like I think I am. I'm sorry if this is <laughs> maybe just zoning out here, but I'm back. Yeah. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, the car is supposed to be. Oh yeah, that's exciting. It's supposed to be ready on uh, April seventh, so I'll probably be sticking around in this area. Like I said, leave me some suggestions of stuff to do. I don't mind driving a few hours to uh, to see stuff, but we'll be, be doing some stuff here in Western New York. Maybe we might dip into Canada, yeah. and do some Canadian adventuring. <gasps> Can we get a little Jen? Oh, you want? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You're a little Canada. Yeah, so I can have us together. Yeah, I do want to. We could be together on my nightstand. Yeah, because, yeah, we're gonna go, I do want to go back to little Canada to see my little me. And. Cammy's in the bag. A cat bag. is a cat. <laughs> the cat is, is playing inside of a bag over there. She's, <laughs> I brought a bag, a bag back of snow globes that we'd collected. Oh, here's the first one that started everything. Let's say, see a bear. <laughs> A bear with a snow globe in its mouth. He's like, rah, rah, rah. has another bear. So we, we it's funny. We picked, yeah, picked up so, so many souvenirs. I gotta, I gotta go through my car and sort out all the souvenirs <laughs> that we purchased. My Vader helmet. Got your Vader helmet in there. People were asking about that. They saw the Vader peeking. Did they out. assume it was for me? <laughs> Probably. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, we gotta gotta go sort through the car. I brought the snow globes in because. I'm, I've had snow globes burst in my car before. Yeah, it's cold again here. It, so it's cold, so I brought the snow globes in. We'll get the rest. Get the rest. The car is packed with junk right now. We'll put, get it, a, get it uh, tomorrow. But thank you. Thank you for following me on this journey, this multi-month journey I've been on. And like I said, here on the Carpet Bagger channel, the road trip... It never ends. It never ends. <laughs> so there'll be more adventures coming imminently but uh until then uh what do i say at the end of these videos <laughs> until then oh, no. if you'd like to help support the channel um consider donating to patreon three dollars or more we'll get you a postcard once a month do you need me to do this part for you <laughs> and then uh enamel pins that's in the etsy shop and I'm on camera. This is the Etsy shop. You're in the Etsy shop. This is the Etsy shop. Yeah. Jen's been sending out uh, pins in my absence as well, <laughs> as, well as uh, helping get the get the getting the postcards out. And um, yeah, and also uh, also on Cameo now. I do special messages on Cameo. All that information is in the description of this video, and all that goes to help keep this train on the track. This bear in the water <laughs> oh no and this dirigible in the air until next time my friends this one's in the bag oh look at that cammy cammy likes to sleep in the bag that was the <laughs> bag of bag of snow globes there this one's in the bag this one oh the cat is in the bag <laughs>